going for mining, it'll be a good practice to make a snow golem and take it with yourself using a lead. The snow golem leaves a snow trail along its path. Hence, this will help you to find the path back home while you're returning. The snow golem will also help you in keeping the mobs away by throwing snowballs towards them. You can place multiple trap doors in this manner and close it to make a fence. Now if you hold a food item in your hand, the mobs will jump inside and follow you, but they can't jump and come out. This can be used to trap multiple mobs using different food types. Here's an awesome trick to save yourself from a creeper's damage. This works even if you don't have any armor or a shield. As soon as the creeper is about to blow up, just place a block in front of it. As you can see, we're almost unaffected. Whereas in the other case, we could have been as low as half an HP. The same also works with TNT. You can use any kind of block to protect yourself. If you're about to loot a bastion, first off, make sure you're wearing something made of gold so that the piglins don't attack you. But if you try to open any chest, they'll start attacking you. To avoid that, use a hopper. Remove the block underneath the chest and place a hopper to collect all the items of the chest without opening it. This way you can loot the bastion without bothering the piglins. Trading halls are very useful in the survival world. But getting the villager into their position is kind of difficult. So here's a tip. If you want to trap a villager into a set position, just click on them. As you can see, they come near you as soon as you click on them. You can continue this process to take them along with you and then push them towards their assigned position. If a mob comes out of its fence and you don't have their required food type, just take a flint and steel and click it over the mob. They have a tendency to go towards the nearest water source. So if there's a water source inside the fence, they'll automatically go towards it, which allows you to close the fence and trap them. Most of you know that sponges are used to dry water, especially the water inside the ocean monument. To dry the wet sponge, most people use a furnace, which requires a lot of fuel. Instead, you can go to the nether and place all of the wet sponges on the ground to dry them out instantly. This is more efficient and saves your time. Here's a trick to make an infinite water source using just one bucket of water. You just need two pieces of kelp to do the trick. Remove four blocks. Now place any block like this and place the water looking at it. Now take the kelp and plant it exactly on these two tiles. That's it. Remove the water you placed before and take as much water as you want now from the infinite water source. Here's an amazing trick to hide a chest inside your room. All you need to do is on the right and the last in between those two. Now place a double chest in this manner and fill the area. To access the chest, just point your cursor towards the leftmost stair. You'll see this black outline. Just move the cursor a bit diagonally till the outline disappears. As soon as it disappears, click on the block to open the chest. You can successfully hide your precious items, such as diamonds, in this way. Books of enchantment are used to upgrade your tools and armor. But did you know, using a fire aspect book, you can light up a campfire? This can be useful in cases when you don't have a flint and steel. 
and you can also light up a TNT. A bunch of TNTs. In fact, a lot of TNTs. As you can see, we were successfully able to do so. If you're planning to build a mini storage outside your house, use this method. Place the chests, now remove blocks in front of it. Then take a bucket and place the water over each of them in this manner. So now, even if a creeper blows up next to it, the chests won't break. This works for TNT as well. The chests remain intact.